Good morning, everyone. So glad you're here. It is officially winter in California. Well, it's not officially, but it's been cold, which if you don't know this, I like it when it's cold and I'm happy to be able to wear a jacket. It's nice. Anyways, I want to uh, talk about a phrase, a very short phrase that's mentioned in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. And, um, you know, Hebrews 11 is an interesting chapter. It, a lot of people call it the, the hall of faith. That's what I was heard it called early in my walk with the Lord. But it talks about all, all, all different people that lived by faith in different ways and how God used them and all of that. And there's a statement in here towards the end. Well, first it tells the story about all of these people different people that God used. And then towards the end, it talks about people that, you know, were, it was different, a different type of faith. They died for their faith, basically. And if we pick it up in verse 37, it says this, they were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were tempted, slain with the sword, wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. It's basically here talking about people that served God regardless of the cost, and it did cost them their life in one, in one way or another. And all of these are horrible things, horrible ways to die, you know. Um, but also some of them, it says, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, they different people endured different things based on how God had called them, right? But this is what I want to pay attention to right here. Verse 38, it says, of whom the world was not worthy. Now, to me, like when I read this, I, I've been thinking about this for a couple of days, honestly. And um, when I read it, I, I mean, this is not a new verse to me. This is something I've read over and over and over, right? But it did strike me. It's like, man, this is interesting. And the thing about it is so many people right now in our world, they're trying to set up a legacy, right? They want to build their own kingdom. They want to do this. Um, basically, they, they're worshiping their self in the way that they live them, their life, okay? They, they're they just, you know, they're not building God's kingdom. They're building their own kingdom. And I, Christians do this too. I, I hate to break the bad news to you, but Christians do that. More, more interested in, more work goes into, more obsessed with their own things, their own, the own things of the world than they are with God's kingdom. They spend all their time and energy burning up on these things that are not, they're going to go away, you know? And some of it's not just like wealth. Some of it is notoriety. Some of it's power, influence, things like that. But I was thinking about this and I was thinking, you know, and this is not arrogance, okay? I'm not speaking from a viewpoint of arrogance. It says, of whom the world was not worthy. I, I hope that at the end of my life that people say that about me. Not, not because I want people to talk about me, but I really hope that I live my life in such a way that that is one of, you know, that's a characteristic like these people in Hebrews 11 that, that lived their life. You know, they were completely sold out for the Lord. They did not, you know, they weren't compromisers. Well, it's an interesting. One of the great things about Hebrews 11 is it's not full of perfect people, okay? You know, but it is full of people that, that God used. It's full of people that 
he loved. And, you know, this is one of those things I just, I was thinking about that. It's like someday, you know, if I die or whatever, rapture is obviously a much better option. Undoubtedly a much better option. But, you know, if, if that, if the Lord tarries and I'm here until the day that I pass away, I hope that not because I want people talking about, oh, Dale, how great he was. That's not what I'm after. What I'm after, what I really hope is that my life is lived similar in, in the way that many of these lives were lived, a life of faith, a life that uh, honors God, a, a life that, you know, is helpful and inspiring and you know, that that leaves an impact. It leaves uh, influence. It leaves a godly uh, example to everybody that it comes in contact with. And I, I don't want people to say this. So like, look, if I do happen to die, I, I'm, I'm not begging people to show up to my funeral just spouting this off. That's not what I'm after. I'm after that my life truly is lived this way. That when it is said, you know, you know, he wasn't, the world's not worthy of a guy like that. It's understood by the hearer to be true, just like it was spoken here. And when this was stated, it was stated as a fact and it was, it's very easy to see in the lives of these people how it is true. So all that is on the heels of basically so much that has been happening in the last few days where it's like, man, sometimes when you have so much going on, it's hard to maintain your focus on what's important, right? And it's always great to, to read a verse like this and to be reminded, this is the goal, you know, this is the goal to live this way. And it's easy to get your eyes off the goal. It's easy to get your eyes onto some other thing, you know, or to get caught up in some situation and forget what, what the goal is, what the ultimate um, point of obedience is, I guess, you know, how, you know, it's like you, you lose the big picture of, of what's happening. You lose the big picture of that and you just, you get caught up in a little detail and it's always good to stumble across one of these verses and to have that like corrective you know, okay, you're going the right direction, but you just need to focus a little bit better. And, and when I read this, then I was thinking, I've been thinking about it for days and I just know like, okay, this is awesome. This is something that, that we need to take time to really contemplate, you know, how am I living my life and what's that going to be? How is it perceived? What's what's the effect? Is it is it fruitful? And, and not to be like a guilt trip, but if it's not fruitful or if it it's not effective, then it's time to go to the Lord and say, "Okay, Lord, what's going on? Change me or fix me or whatever." You know. So, anyways, that's where I'm at. I hope that hearing that blesses you. I hope that it's challenging. I hope it's encouraging or, you know, that the Lord uses it however he chooses. And I hope you have a great day. Please take a minute. I know this is, it's hard, but click on the like button and subscribe. And um, if you haven't yet, that will bless my channel. Also, Leave me a comment. I enjoy that. 
And thank you, thank you to all of you people that are leaving comments. I read these things um, fairly regularly, and they're a blessing. So anyways, may the Lord richly bless you. Have a great day. I'll see you again tomorrow.